I have a lovely mountain maple group here, which one of my dear friends, I call him a friend because he's been coming to me for more than 30 years, and this was created by him from ordinary nursery material, DIY maple group, and as he says, there are now uh, six and three, nine, that's okay, nine trees and one died. Oh, eight. No, there are nine. It's very oh, it's nice. Still, it's yes. three, four, yeah. The small trees in the background gives it a lot of perspective. And I don't know whether you are going to repot it or not, but what Chris has asked me to do is to trim it. Because you will admit it's a bit over heavy at the top. It's very dense at the top and the balance somehow has been lost. So if you can give me a free hand and trust me to do it, I will show you what I'm about to do. So the best thing to do is to do the bag trick. Let me bring a piece of plastic. So a tree like this, it's become top heavy, so I'm going to reduce it to about there, which will be more in balance and keeping with the size of trunk. But this is very, very dense at the top. So, people are always afraid to trim for some reason. I know that it's quite natural because you've taken all the trouble to grow it over so many years, so why cut it off? But you will have to, at some stage, what we would say, bite the bullet and deal with the trees eventually. So, I've shown it on other videos. If you want to look at each tree individually, you can also put a bag and look at each tree individually, separate the tree. So look at that, that is one tree that you're going to deal with, you see, so that tree has to be brought back in proportion to the group that we are trying to make. So again, it's much too tall. And this is the shape of tree you need to maintain. Also with the forest group, the branches should be a bit shorter, not too long, because in a forest the trees are cramped together, so they would naturally grow very tight so that is how I would trim that tree you see how it looks it's still a nice conical shape and I've brought it back to size so that's that one done so if we do the same thing with each of these trees for some reason I'm able to visualize the tree without having to use a bag but if you find using a bag does help you then by all means use the bag. I find a lot of my customers find it useful to look at each tree in that way. So with this one, by the way, maples tend to have dieback of the young twigs quite frequently. So don't blame yourself. That's the nature of the maple. So that tree has been brought back to like that size. Okay, so you can identify each tree separately and deal with each tree in turn. You also got to bear in mind that you're looking at the totality of the tree. You mustn't be so myopic that you only see one tree at a time. You've got to see the totality. So all the trees should form a unity. It should be a unified whole. This group is slightly different because you've got the principal tree or the dominant tree on the side. Normally the dominant tree should be in the middle, but no matter, you can still do it that way. Now again, if you would like to see each tree done separately for the sake of the viewers, I will separate it. Although as I always say, I can visualize the tree without having to do this. When I do my own trees, I don't need the use of a bag. So with this tree, if you come here, turn it on, you can see I'm trying to reduce the size of this tree as well. Far too tall. Each tree again should be 
slightly conical in shape. Right, is shortened. When they get top heavy, they become an inverse triangle. And that gives a very heavy, heavy feeling. This is what I would call a classic case of biting the bullet. You know, people are always hesitant and they put off, put off the evil day. I'll do it some other time. And before you know where you are, the tree becomes unmanageable. This is a very healthy tree, so whatever we do, the tree won't suffer. So you see how I brought that back to shape. It's no longer top heavy. It's no longer the inverse triangles. You see, these are all inverse triangles. They're splaying out like that, whereas we want to bring it down this way. Now, this back branch here, I will show you. I think it's quite easy to do. The small trees, of course, at the back give a very lovely depth and perspective. So because they're receding, it gives the impression that you're creating a painting, trees in the distance, so there's a lot of depth. You're looking deep into the distance. So that is how you would use the small trees. Now this one, you look at this one, look how lanky this has become. Again, top heavy, you want branches growing from there. So bite the bullet and encourage these to grow. Also this one, you see how long these laterals have become. This is far too long. I'm going to now turn it around to the front side to give you a better view. So now because this tree here and this tree here are forming the apex, I will still keep the conical shape. So I'm not going to trim it that hard because I will lose the conical shape if I attempt to trim it that hard. So these trees are not going to be trimmed hard, just going to make sure that they create the triangular shape rather than the obtuse or the inverted triangle. So having those trees in the center and going at the top, I still form the overall triangular shape for the group. This is how this group will look. We've caught the trees at the right time. They are not in leaf yet, so ideal time to do the pruning. And also, if you wish to repot, this ideal time to repot. So, just with a little bit of pruning using my trusty Felco secateurs, we have brought the tree back to what I regard as a more proportionate style. There's some dead twigs here I will cut off. So that will see you through for another few years. I don't know whether we want to repot, but we have a check and see. Repot in a couple of years. Ago. Well, it can stay another year or so. Not that problem. Yeah. So you're happy with it? Yes. I'm very happy. Okay. Pleasure. I like it. So that's what we should do. There you go. It'll fit in the car better. <laughs> so I've put a slightly different species within this maple video that I'm doing because uh, Chris has brought here a tree that he wants advice on and as you can see this is an airing that you started only last year or is it this time than? last year only last, last year, year. Yeah. okay in the space of just under 12 months look at what has happened Chris attempted to do an air layer and this is what we call calcing that means they form all these dormant roots but the roots somehow haven't popped out yet but it doesn't mean all is lost i very often find on some of the rarer maples they tend to do this they will make a callus but they will not send root trident maple also does that so if i scrape away a little bit you will see that it is well alive you can see you see it's turgid white and green so it's obviously not there so you could score it like this because this can stimulate roots to come. Like when you grow apple trees, you can go around, you know, scoring the bark, it sends new shoots out. So this is something we can try doing to encourage more roots to come. But I'm going to dust it with some more hormone rooting powder to encourage the formation of roots. 
not only that, I will score the trunk again, right round. That means doing another air lift. So I will go round. I won't go round all the way. I will go round three quarters of the way. That means I'm going to leave a little bridge just to be on the safe side because sometimes if you take away too much bark, it can be stressful for the tree. So I will leave a bridge to ensure that enough sap continues to flow. That means we're trying to do air layer a second time. Usually beach, hornbeam, and not just ordinary European beach, but the Japanese beach, Fagus Cronata, they air layer quite readily, quite easily. So this is what I would do. And then this is the hormone powder that I use. And I would dust it on top of the calloused part because this is where the roots will eventually come. There's no point dusting it there. You can if you wish, but the roots won't come then. The object is to try and bring roots going here. And just for good measure, I might even score this a little more. Stimulate a little more above that. It may form more callus, it may form more root. But this is what I would do. And then the rest, of course, is putting the sphagnum moss in a moss ball and tying it up. I don't need to show that because you've seen that many times. But the main object of telling you this is to explain what you need to do when you get calcing but no root. So I hope you found it useful. Yep. So I thought I'd finished doing the video, but no, I went and completed the entire process. So we put a background, put the moss around, and let's hope it will produce roots. Just make sure it doesn't dry, you can pour water from the top if you wish. And good luck, you should get two very nice bonsai from this. Okay, there you go.